technically we're still in retrograde season you guys like saturn doesn't go direct until the 10th jupiter goes direct a few days later but Mercury is still in retrograde. So it's not, we're like, we're not out of the woods yet. And I've been, I've been having to really calm myself down and like ground myself and bring myself back to reality saying, Eric, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. Like it's still retrograde season. This could be a last ditch effort to really clear out some more stuff. Hello everyone. Happy Friday to you. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, for your moment, for your week, for your year, whatever. Yeah, please keep in mind this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. There are no dates associated with this. Yeah. I hope you guys are feeling well today. I will say that I, I kind of woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, this morning. And honestly, I really couldn't even tell you why. I've been, um, uh, I've been, you know, going about my morning, doing whatever it was I wanted, needed to do, getting myself together, you know, pulling up, pulling up and all that. Um, and it just hasn't felt good. And I noticed that, um, you know, as I was sitting there trying to, you know, trying to get my mind right. And, um, I was just griping. I was just a grumble. Rah, 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 everything is shit. Rah, 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 rah. And eventually, <laughs> eventually I said to myself, whoa, Eric, okay. I understand you're feeling some shit. That's fine. That is perfectly valid. But we've got to try and change this around instead of really sinking into it, you know, and having that pity party with this part of you that's upset instead of just kind of sinking into it and allowing it to continue and not only allowing it to continue, but allowing it to gain more momentum. You've got to pull back and say, I see you. I hear you. Okay. But we've got to change our focus here, all right? So that's where I am right now. Um, and I really couldn't even tell you why I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. However, I did have some dreams. I did have some dreams last night that were quite weird. Um, and that I'm trying to put focus on right now, trying to understand. And now that I think about it, it's interesting because I was thinking, I've kind of been kind of thinking about it all, all morning, but it never really made sense. But now all of a sudden, now that I sit down in this space and I think about it, I'm like, oh, all right, well, that does make sense. And you know what's interesting about that is this is a space of clarity that I'm sitting in. Literally, this is a space that I have cultivated an energy of channeling energies and making sense of them, not just for myself, but for the collective here. So it's quite fitting that it, none of it made sense until I sat down in my chair to start channeling for the collective and boop, all of a sudden, oh, wow, that makes, that does make sense. <laughs> That's kind of cool, right? So anyway... These dreams, well, it does make sense, but I don't, I, 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 or I, I can't, can't really put it into words right now, so we're not going to waste time doing that. But now I can see that part of, I guess, what I'm feeling here today is a reflection of what I was dreaming about. Um... Yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys are feeling well today. Uh, I hope you have a good day, and I hope that you have a good weekend ahead. It's Friday, guys. It's the weekend. Hey, do we get excited for that anymore? Yikes. Um, 
This is my first sip of coffee that I've had this morning, actually. That's interesting. There, there are days where I've had a whole cup before I got in the, I've gotten the morning coffee. But anyway, um, do we get excited for the weekend anymore? I just feel like so much is changing in our world, in our reality, in our lives that, um, that, you know, many of us have been going through a change in the dynamic of the week, right? You know, many, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to start projecting, but I just feel like we don't, I just, I just feel like, and maybe this has just been my experience, but I just feel like it's not, woo, the weekend. Like, I don't know what you expect me to do. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway let's go uh, let's get into some cards that's enough rambling enough story time let's get into the let's get into the messages for i just heard for the weekend so i get okay i guess we got a little bit of a weekend dose of happy of morning coffee going on today well that's great um so let's get into it i'm finishing out the week as i had planned or as i had hoped i'm using the before and the after tarot and then we will get our closing oracle guidance at the end but of course as always we will cross that bridge when we get there yeah cool let's do this y'all and see what we have for the collective today Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. Let's get into this. Yeah. Um, also, wait. Let me do a little bit up. Okay. Yeah, that's a little better. Yay. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah. All right. Five shuffles. Here we go. This is one. This is two. Four. The collective. What do we have for the collective at this time, please, Spirit? This is three. This is four. There's so much going through my mind right now. Are you? Is your mind racing like so much? And this is five. And I can't really even say it has what's going through my mind personally has anything to do with the collective. It's all with my, it all has to do with my perception of the collective, how I'm seeing the collective, how I've been seeing the collective. And the collective is more than just us here. I'm not trying to judge anybody. It's just, it's my own way of seeing things. That's just racing through my head. And it's like... I, It's a little exhausting, not gonna lie. Okay, so what do we have for the collective, please? Here. The Six of Cups is the first card out. Okay. So what I'm getting with the Six of Cups so far is that this time period or this message at least what it is we're feeling at this time, it all, it's all surrounding the past. I feel like there is a review process of the past. It's the, the past and maybe even the recent past, you know, up until the last few months or like the last year or two or just an extended period of time, whatever. That could be on the forefront of your mind right now, okay? 
overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Wands. So what I'm feeling here is there is a, a desire or a need to focus on the past in a way, but to help drive you forward. It's almost as if you're in, we're in this Knight of Wands energy, looking to move forward, looking to manifest, okay? Nine, Knight of Wands, the magician. We're looking to manifest. We're looking to move forward. But it feels like, and what I'm hearing is, there are still some things, right, there are still some things from the past that we're needing to get over, that we're needing to feel through, okay? The Five of Cups has caught my attention. Now, the Five of Cups was down there, but the deck split in a way that I saw it and was called to pull it. And so there are still some things that we're needing to do some emotional cleansing, clearing, and healing from to gain the wisdom from, of, or we gain the wisdom from, Ace of Swords to complete that cycle. Ten of Pentacles, King of Swords. Okay. I don't really feel like this is ever something we're going to stop doing. This is part of a cleansing, a clearing, and a healing process. And technically, we're still in retrograde season, you guys. Like, Saturn doesn't go direct until the 10th, which is today's the 8th which is this coming Sunday. Jupiter goes direct a few days later, but Mercury is still in retrograde and is going to be in retrograde until like the end of the month. So it's not, we're like, we're not out of the woods yet. And I've been, I've been having to really calm myself down and like ground myself and bring myself back to reality saying, Eric, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. Like it's still retrograde season. And like I said, during happy hour this past Wednesday, um, things are about to go direct. Yes, but this could be a last ditch effort to really clear out some more stuff. And what I'm feeling with the Knight of Wands here, specifically with the Knight of Wands, even though the Knight of Wands is connected to the Magician, but what I'm feeling with the Knight of Wands is that there is a push. There is this sense of enthusiasm to move forward, to get out of here, right? To get out of this space that we've been in, this mental space, this darkness. So it's almost as if there is, um, I, I heard an overzealous energy. Okay, that makes sense. And the, yes, there is a bit of a, excuse me, there is a bit of an overzealous energy to move forward to be clear of this, to get out of this space, this time frame, this energetic spectrum, whatever. But you can't rush this. I mean, we there is no fast forward button to say, all right, let me just push fast forward and get through and, and come out of come out of this and get into the good place of things being back to normal, meaning coming out of retrograde season. That can't that's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen. You can't rush it. Okay. What I will say, though, is that this Knight of Wands energy, this zealousness, overzealousness is what I'm hearing. But this is not necessarily a bad thing. You can use this to your advantage. Just don't let it run amok with you. Don't let it drive you crazy, which it seems it already has to some extent. That's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just pull it back. Just pull it. Rain it in. Just rain it in. You're aware of it now. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You're a human being. You're allowed to, you know, you, you uh, fuck that. Like, screw being a human being. You're allowed to make mistakes. No, like, we're living here. We, we're allowed, we need to be able to experience things to find out where the boundaries need to lie, right? You know, one of the, um, I feel like a common misconception within the collective is that we should know all of this by now. You shouldn't, you, you should have, you should have been prepared. You should have been ready for this, but like when it, before it showed up and because you're not ready, that means you're weak and you deserve whatever destruction or madness comes with it. That is absolute malarkey. Okay. We are here to learn 
and we learn and grow through experience. I mean, it becomes a problem when you've been learning the same lesson or you've been experiencing the same lesson over and over and over again and you're still not getting it and you're not even making or someone isn't even making any sort of effort to change things. Even the smallest step in a direction towards change is beautiful, is good, is beneficial. Okay? But this, 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 this egoic feeling or this controlling feeling of, well, you should know this by now. And if you don't, you're SOL. You're shit out of luck. And you deserve whatever you get from that. That's terrible. Okay? That is a control tactic. That is an element of darkness, dark forces, negative energies trying to keep you down so that you don't rise above, so that you don't stand up, so that you don't speak up, so that, you know what I mean? Don't let that happen. Don't let yourself be co pushed or coerced into a corner thinking that you, you there's no way out. Or that you are deserving of the destruction. I mean, sometimes, yes, the destruction is necessary. But understand that you deserve so much more. And the destruction is coming in to help you gain that much more. Because whatever is being destroyed needs to go so that you can have space for the new, right? Six of Cups. Dealing with the past somehow. We have more cards here. Two sets, actually. Both have fallen face down, so we can look at these as somewhat of an underlying energy. First set is the Wheel of Fortune and the Page of Swords. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, especially with the Six of Cups. So for some of us here, this is an element of learning from the past. Seeking out the points where we can close out a cycle or seeking the exit points seeking an understanding of the past so that we can close out the karmic cycles and move forward you guys we are still in retrograde season and this is the perfect time to do all this it has been the whole time you can see any sort of retrograde as a moment to move backwards like the planets are not, they're not technically moving backwards, but from our vision, from our point of view, it looks like the planet is moving backwards. And what I like to think about in that sense is, as the planet was moving forward, things were being done, right? And it left a trail of solidified energy that is the past, right? Okay. But as the planet starts to move backward, the best one to look at is Saturn with this, right? As the planet starts to look back, move backwards, I see it as the planet is now moving back into what has already been solidified and kind of breaking it apart. Like literally, like literally both bulldozing or like digging through a mountain and, and, and breaking and, and almost either breaking it apart completely or loosening it up so that you can continue to shape it, reshape it, remove it, blah, blah, blah. It's like a time period for you to assess what has happened in the past or assess where it is you find yourself currently and start to make big change. And that's what I'm seeing here with the Six of Cups and the Page of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune. The Page of Swords is that seeker energy that allows you to get a real focused view on the karmic cycles that you've been experiencing or just whatever it is you've been experiencing up until this point, if you don't see it as, or can wanna call it a karmic cycle, whatever, okay? What, what has been ongoing? But we look at it from this point of view with an eye towards changing the pattern, changing the cycle. And that's why the Page of Swords is so important because again, the Page of Swords is the seeker. The Page of Swords is the sentry. The Page of Swords is the individual or the energy that goes out there and seeks, searches for, seeks out the information, the facts, the truth, the reality of it, right? Takes all his notes and gathers all his or her, her his or her um, 
uh, information and then takes that back to the ruling party and says, this is what I've found. That ruling party is you. The Page of Swords is also you. But okay. Right? Okay. So what I want to ask you at this point is what have you learned here? What have you come to realize here? What understandings, what truths have you come to at this point? What have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about others? What have you learned about yourself through the mirror of others? Now is the time to take all of that in and really make some change. Because when we exit retrograde season, you don't want to be doing the same things you were in the past. In some cases, you can't. Case in point, the pandemic started in March of 2020 last year, right? And since then, things have not gotten better. Things have gotten progressively worse and worse and worse. And there's more and more evidence of the corruption, the lies, the backstabbing, the cheating, all that stuff that are coming out. The further we get, more and more and more of this comes out until it gets to a point where everything's just going to have to collapse or something. Like something's got to give at some point, right? But I mention that because there are plenty of people here, even now more so with these mandates, but there are plenty of people here that don't have that same job anymore. It's not like you can just go back to the way things were. For some people, those jobs just don't exist. Like the nurses right now and the doctors that are losing their jobs because they're not choosing to comply with the mandate. It's not business as usual and it's not going to be business as usual. Quite frankly, you guys, we don't want that anymore. No matter how much, and okay, so this is for someone out there that's really been struggling with this. No matter how much you may want the status quo to come back, I hate to break it to you, but I'm here to tell you, it's not coming back. It's not. It's not sustainable any longer. Quite frankly, it never was. And this is something that we have to accept. And we have to be loving and caring and compassionate and nurturing to ourselves as we all go through this transition. But we don't do that just for ourselves. We got to do it for everyone else too. Because everybody is facing this. Regardless as to what it is they tell you or how it looks on the surface. Everybody, each and every human on the planet at this moment is facing this energy right now. The change of the cycles the breaking of the patterns. There's two more cards here that I wanna look at, also fallen face down. Actually, it's three, excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's three more cards. Ooh, oh, and it's a serious set. Mm. Look at this. Eight of swords, three of pentacles, three of swords. So you've been trapped, haven't you? And you're finally starting to see it, aren't you? Yeah. And that hurts, doesn't it? Hell to the motherfucking yeah, it hurts. And you want to know why it hurts? It hurts because I have been trapped or we have been trapped by the very people that vowed to protect us. That vowed to do what was best for us, that vowed to stand up for our best interest. And what did they do? Not only did they betray us, but they backed us into a corner. They shoved us into a prison. They shoved us into a sense of confinement. For others of you, you're recognizing how you've been holding yourself in certain patterns, Eight of Swords. 
but you're doing the work, three of pentacles, to heal from it. And what I'm feeling, from, regardless as to whatever this means for you specifically, what I'm feeling here is the three of swords is the indication, the pain is the indication of what needs to be healed or fixed or reconstructed. So don't shy away from this pain. Don't hide from this pain. You have to feel it. Because the pain, okay, the pain is yourself communicating to you that something is wrong. We don't have a nervous system in our bodies, in our physical bodies, that projects pain when something is wrong without a reason. It's not some arbitrary thing that God, source, creator, or the universe said, hey, give these humans this, like, this thing in themselves that makes them hurt. It doesn't really mean anything. We just like to see them in pain. No. It's an indication that something is wrong and needs to be fixed, needs to be healed. But what do we do? We allow ourselves to stay in these little confinement and this 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 prison you look look i didn't even realize this but do you look at do you see this here in this is the before tarot okay there is a figure a dark figure i'm going to show you in a second there is a dark hooded figure looks like it could be a man because it looks like it does have a beard that is literally walking this woman into this into this eight of swords mental prison and she's blindfolded But the pain, what hurts you the most, what hurts you at all, is an indication of where some work needs to be done. And it's obvious that you can't trust this hooded, black shrouded figure anymore, right? Who can you trust the most in these situations? God, source, creator? Sure, that's a great answer. Who else? Yourself. But for many of us, we don't even have a connection with ourselves to say, what the fuck do we do now? Well, now is that time to build it. And that is part of why we're here. Page of Swords, Wheel of Fortune, Six of Cups. Okay. Let's get some clarification going. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Let's start with the Page of Swords, Wheel of Fortune, and the Six of Cups. Yes? A little bit of clo- Ooh, wee! Okay, well, <laughs> at the bottom of the deck, you've got the tower. Okay. <laughs> Page of Swords, Wheel of Fortune, Six of Cups, yeah? What is this, please, Spirit? Can you give us some clarity here, please? Just a little bit of clarification. Ooh, yikes. Okay. Overall energy is the Nine of Swords. But see, this is the after tarot, right? Fear and illusion has caught us trapped. Not anymore. This person is fighting back. This person's not laying in their bed all scared and like, what the fuck is going to happen? Oh my God, demons are after me. Rah, rah, rah. No, this person is fighting back. This person has said, enough is enough. You are not going to haunt me any longer. You are not going to control me any longer. And that's funny because look at what we have here. First of all, we have four cards. They've all fallen face down. But on top of this pile, very first card on top of this pile is the fucking devil. 
See, but what this is what this is saying here is despite the devil's activity, okay, there is a sense of self-worth that's coming online here. A sense of understanding what it is that you bring to the table. A sense of understanding your own personal fertility and abundance, whether you're a man or a woman, doesn't matter. And from there, we say to ourselves, all right, what have we learned here? Seven of Pentacles. What are the nuggets of wisdom that I can take from this? Is there anything from this harvest or from whatever it is we've been growing here, whatever it is that's developed, is there anything salvageable? In some cases, yes. In many cases, no. But ultimately, we are needing to have the emotional strength and the emotional stability and the strength of character to handle that appropriately. And handling that appropriately, in many cases, means just pouring that out all together and starting all over. And that is okay. That is okay. Because whatever it was that we were developing, whatever it was that we were building, whatever it was that we were working on or trying to get to work out, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, all whoop de whoop and all that bullshit, right? It was from this guy. It was from this place. It was from a dark place. It was from a fearful place. It was from a negative place. It was from a codependent place. It was from an addictive place. But now is the time to fight back. Nine of Swords. Now is the time to walk away. Walk away from what no longer serves you. Walk away from what drains you. Walk away from what leaves you feeling depleted. Walk away from what feels you leaving, what leaves you feeling a, la a sense of lack. That you're not good enough. That you'll never be good enough. Walk away from that shit. And walk towards self love do what is right for you reject the system you have the choice you have the power don't you remember don't you remember saying i elect you because you represent me you had the power to put these individuals in place you had the power to to say yay or nay to the system at one point why don't you anymore? It's a damn good question. Why don't you have a choice anymore? I mean, that's how our society was supposed to be built, right? Power to the people, right? So why don't we have this choice any longer? Let's look at that. Three of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Three of Swords. Can you give us some clarity here, please, Spirit? And we're back to the tower. Okay. We need to get something through our heads right now. And we just need to accept it. Okay? And that is the fact that this is not, none of this is going to change overnight. Granted, we've been doing a lot of work during this retrograde season. We have. And we absolutely should be commended for that. Sorry, I was playing with my bracelets. But it's not going to change overnight and it's definitely not going to be easy. We have the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Five of Wands. And we have the Nine of Pentacles. So, there are going to be arguments. There are going to be differing of opinion, differences of opinion. But ultimately, we need to stand our ground. We need to come together as a collective. We need to come together as a people and say, 
We are in control here. You need us more than we need you. Because without you, we can band together and be just fine. You were only put into place to help streamline the process. But it seems you just want to take over and destroy things. So fine. We'll tear the whole thing down. And we'll start over. Because now we get it. Now we see who the real culprit is. Now we see what the real problem is here. And we are going to move forward with our hearts. We are going to move forward with compassion because that is what the universe is calling for. That's what Mother Gaia is calling for. I mean, I really wasn't intending to get all political, but shit, it is what it is, right? <laughs> and you can apply this to politics, you can apply this to your life. It doesn't fucking matter, y'all. It's a general reading. And if it doesn't resonate with you, if you don't like it, then you don't have to watch. Closing Oracle Guidance. It's coming from the Liquid Crystal. Oracle. Woo! Oh, I almost dropped the whole damn deck. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, y'all. Let's get into this. I'm gonna need this five shuffles. And we'll see what closing message we have today. Yeah? This is one. And you know, what we were talking about here could literally be applied to your ego. There is no ego if there is no you. And yes, the ego gets demonized all the time, but also the ego gives a lot, is, is given a lot more control and power than is necessary, than it was even intended to have. Our egos are a defense mechanism. It's what, it's the interface that our soul and spirit uses to help keep itself protected because from where the soul and the spirit comes from, you don't need this type of protection, right? It makes perfect sense. It's a non-physical reality. It's a non-physical being, non-physical entity entering into a physical reality. All right, that makes sense. So if we want to talk about tyranny, if we want to talk about tyrannical forces, look at your ego first, right? I mean, like, yikes. The ways that our egos control us are absolutely frightening sometimes. And I am not innocent. I am a human being just like you, and I've got an ego that has been running rampant for 34 years. It's time to get that shit in check, isn't it? This is two. This is three. This is four. Such weird dreams, you guys. Such weird dreams last night. This is five. I don't know where that's coming. I mean, it's it's coming forward now, but anyway. All right, closing Oracle Guidance here. closing oracle guidance we have here is Labrador, right? Free will. Uh, eh, there it is. Okay. This is a beautiful card. I love the colors here. All right. 
The arrival of Labradorite for you today signals the empowerment of free will, an exciting time of change and creation. But before she can do her work, the mind must be refined and brought into unity. Labradorite is letting us know it's action time. So refine your focus, meditate, and be sure to feel what your heart and soul need in order to go fo forward towards life purpose. Prepare to create with love, free from fear, and under the guidance of spirit for the betterment of all. Labradorite also lets us know that it is time to spiritualize our surroundings and understand the purposes behind all that is in our life, even physically. All creation holds purpose. Be ready to know what it is. In your new embrace, there are no secrets, only truth. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you all so much love. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Bye.